What's up guys, it's Wombat, coming to you live, straight out of Compton, har har, that's private information, and today we're back with a review of Beyblade Burst, Revive Phoenix, 10 Friction, which I actually don't have the disc for, and I'll explain why in a few minutes, but, uh, this Beyblade was, I think, the first starter released during the, um, the Chosey series, because it was the first one to come with like an actual launcher. So, uh, I'll go into all the parts now. I really need to work on making a better intro for these, because they're so bad. Uh, the layer is Revive Phoenix, which has... It is the second heaviest layer as of before GT at 24 grams. Um, most of that is in the outer armor. And it actually has a gimmick that is called the Revive Armor, where it's a two-part layer. There is uh, this centerpiece here called the Core, and then this piece is called the Armor, this is called the Revive Armor. And basically how it fits on is that you attach it here, and then you put the Beyblade three clicks onto the driver, and then rotate the armor so it locks in place and put the final click in. Apparently that's how you're supposed to do it. There are ways to attach it where it is tighter or looser. Um, and the gimmick is that sometimes during the battle, this armor, it'll take one click to knock the armor off in most circumstances. And uh, after the armor comes off, it can just like fly around anywhere. You're not allowed to touch it. If it lands inside the stadium, you can't remove it. It's now still in play. Uh, so this can be useful for like bursting things with a projectile, but because most of Revive Phoenix's weight is in this outer armor, when it if it falls off early in the match, it loses a ton of stamina potential just because it drops down to I want to say like 12, 14 grams, which is about the same amount as like the best Hasbro layers and probably a good like 8 to 10 grams less than most other competitive stuff in Chosey. So it's not going to lose, it's probably not going to win a same spin stamina match unless the armor, I guess, trips up the opponent and makes them lose spin. But since you can't control the armor after it falls off Revive Phoenix, I wouldn't really consider that to be a reliable strategy by any means. Um, and there is actually... I know Revive Phoenix tends to be a lot more popular in Asian countries. I know they use like Revive Phoenix Outer Eternal. Um, I don't know what else they used it on. Maybe Extend Plus, maybe Atomic. But uh, it never really caught on in the US and the UK and Canada just because people didn't really see a reason to use it over Archer Hercules. Just with the whole uh, being able, being unable to control the armor thing and I guess variations between parts as well because people were saying that oh revive phoenix 10 cross atomic can defeat both hell salamander atomic and archer hercules eternal and that might have been true for some people but it just wasn't true across the board and because of that it just never became more popular than archer hercules and even now with uh dead phoenix out you can make perfect phoenix with Perfect Phoenix, which is the Revive Phoenix core, and the Dead Phoenix armor, which outclasses Revive Phoenix as it is now, but I'm not sure if it's better than Archer Hercules or not. If it's not, it probably suffers the same in inconsistency reasons that Revive Phoenix does. If it is, that just means that the dead armor is heavy enough and round enough that it doesn't fall off very frequently. Um, overall, it's a very, like, cool, gimmicky, interesting layer, but, and it has, like, the potential to be competitive, I just don't think it really is competitive at the highest level, at this, in the same way that Hell Salamander or Archer Hercules is at the moment. And then the disc is 10, which I used to have because, obviously, I bought Revive Phoenix, but, um, I don't have it, I don't have it anymore, so I'll just put a picture right here, but... There's actually two designs to 10. There's the one that came with the normal releases, which is the filled-in version, and this weighs about 24 grams, I want to say. 
And then there's the hollowed out version, which is the one that you see in the anime, which I don't think an official image for exists. If I can find one, I'll post it right here. But basically, I don't know the weight of the hollowed out version. It was released, I think, in some weird limited edition bay that I forget, but I'm pretty sure it exists in real life somewhere in some release. Um, I don't know if it's any good. The normal 10 disc is... It's one of the better discs in the game. It's got a very... I think the underside is completely smooth, so you can use it on things like Revolve or Eternal or Bearing, and it will just roll when it falls over instead of scraping on anything. Uh, I found it to be a bit more likely to burst than 7, personally. Um, if you go way back to my Revive Phoenix testing video, or unboxing, that I did like, I don't know, like, 8 or 9 months ago, you'll see I was testing like Neptune 7 Revolve versus Neptune 10 Revolve, and even with my newer Neptune, 10 was bursting more than 7. So I think 10 bursts more than 7, at least for me. Um, I also found it to have more stamina than 7. But then again, there are people who still think that Zero has the most stamina, so I really think it's depending on, I guess, balance variations or weight variations within 10 and Zero and Double Zero and Seven, that one of them couldn't be better than the other, or worse. It's too close to call sometimes. Um, so yeah, 10 is a good disc. I just don't have it because I let someone borrow it at the tournament. Um, they went home with it by accident because I forgot to get it back from them. Uh, they said they mailed it to me and I just never got it so either they like kept it or it's lost in the mail somewhere. It's not a big deal because I'm planning on buying that, uh, Royal King Spriggan at some point for Jolt Dash and 10 and the White Spriggan is also pretty cool looking so I'll have a new 10 someday hopefully. And then finally the driver is... Friction, which is a ball that's made of POM, which is the uh, the smooth plastic that doesn't have a lot of grip, that's made with uh, bearing and eternal and yielding and polish, and I can't remember if like Guardian Curve use chains are actually made of POM or not, I know there was an argument about this, but uh, yeah. And then it has this ring that is rubber around it. Uh, the ring doesn't ever touch the ground from my experience, just because, I don't know, it might at like its very last second of spin before it falls over in a curved stadium, but you can't really see it in this picture, but it's, I'm putting this at like the maximum tilt and the ring still isn't touching the ground against the flat surface, so. I don't really think the rubber ring is used very much at all. So it's really just like mat a POM massive. And it's not that good. It's pretty much outclassed by Orbit, um, Atomic. It has. Well, it's worse than both of those in terms of like same spin and opposite spin performance. Um, Atomic might be a little easier to burst, but Orbit's definitely not. So. Just kind of like an interesting part. Uh, it might see some use in Burst Classic or Burst Limited, but I doubt it. Just kind of something to skip over. And then, uh, something else that Revive Phoenix does come with is the Phoenix Launcher, which is just a light launcher, but it also comes with this super long Phoenix Winder, which is even longer than the Long Winder. Um, I kind of like it because it lets you launch things harder. Like, there for some combos, I still think that the Light Launcher and the Phoenix Winder is the most powerful launcher, better than like the Chosy Achilles Launcher, or the LR, or whatever other launchers are, might be the most powerful, but, um... Recently, I've been liking the Long Winder a bit more. It might be a little shorter, but I think just the way the handle is set up on the Long Winder makes it easier to grip than the Phoenix Winder. Um, but I guess that's more of a personal preference thing. The Phoenix Binder would be, like, objectively more powerful just because it's longer, like, all, the, all of your things being equal. 
but it is it's also a launcher that's probably worth picking up and I think the only way you can get it is through the revived Phoenix starter so overall um you'll need revived Phoenix to make perfect Phoenix which is pretty good it might not be the best but it's still pretty good um 10 is also a good disc and this is one of the only ways to get it I think it was in like or it's in that one Fruity Pebble Archer Hercules which I keep forgetting exists and um the Chosy Spriggan and I think it's in one other thing too but uh and I think it's coming up in like the next random booster but it is really was really only available in Revive Phoenix for a while and then Friction is kind of just a meh driver but the other parts in the launcher I still I think still make Revive Phoenix worth a buy, so you can make Perfect Phoenix, and 10 is a useful disc, and the launcher is good. So um, I actually did this out of order, I recorded this after the Vice Leopard one, even though Revive Phoenix came out like a week before, I thought they came out at the same time, I think it's, is, isn't, is that unusual that they came out like a week apart? I don't know, but uh... Up next, I think, is Buster Excalibur, which is, like, no, uh, I'm not looking forward to this review, so uh, I'll see you guys then.